Well, that's gone. Got it. You see, now it feels like I've only had two hours of sleep because I just used up all of my energy. <laughs> Renaki, you just reminded me of that one Super Bowl ad. Hand in a bag of M&Ms. I'm sorry I called you a Karen. My name is actually Karen. I'm sorry your name is actually Karen. <laughs> uh, 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 like, I, I just realized something. Like, do, like, do you think at some point in the future... Because of the way humanity works with, like, symbols and names and shit. Is Karen going to become an extinct name at some point? I am not sure. Like, are people just going to stop naming their kids Karen one day? Because, like, no one wants to do it? Because of all of the jokes and memes associated with it? Because, like, ah! fucking... I know throughout history there have been symbols and words that have basically been blacklisted because of the history associated with them. Yeah. Like so I'm just like, can that happen with a name? Like, can a name go extinct? And is it going to be because of a fucking meme? <laughs> is Karen going to go extinct because of a fucking meme? <laughs> is this the universe we live in? I don't know why I'm being so intense tonight. <laughs> I don't know why either, but it's but I love it. Mm. I think it's because as more and more people left, like the gaps between stuff we'd say got bigger, my brain tries to compensate to make more noise, because silence is crippling. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Trying to carry the weight of chatting with the uh, viewers and such, it can be challenging. Yeah. Alright. Almost there, almost there. Whoa, we're halfway there. Ah. <laughs> Fuck. Bon Jovi jug on his ass. Now on, now on <laughs> CDs. I just realized I was muted this entire time. Oh, I hate that. It's like you're trying to say something, but then it's like, oh. It's like you, you look and either your mute indicator is on or you've done the thing with your headset. Where yeah, it doesn't but... receive your audio. And it's just like, ah. Fantastic. So, going back to the Karen thing. I think it depends how, like, culture takes the word, the name Karen to. Because, like, who knows? Maybe, like, five or ten years from now, Karen, like, becomes the equivalent of, like, being a Chad, you know? You, you think there might be a Karen redemption arc? Maybe. Like, cult my, culture's weird. Culture is weird. It's unpredictable. Exactly. Well, I mean, if one of the fuck it, if one of the Paul brothers can attempt a redemption arc, even if they failed, maybe Karen, maybe Karen can have a redemption arc. No, Logan Paul deserves no redemption. Ah, oh, fuck. No, I know, but at some point it Hit seemed him like again. Like I remember, at some point, it seemed like Logan was gonna have a redemption, but then he didn't. I'm just like. The fact that it could have is weird. So, like, yeah, maybe Karen can have a redemption arc. Also, anime trials. Also, Karen becoming Chad won't do much, especially since Chad is itself not a very favorable, favorable thing. Ah. It has its own meme that kind of brings it down. I think like, the term... Because, like, nowadays, Chad is just associated with the friggin' 
the douchebag that's full of himself and his old bark no bite and thinks they're hot shit just because a woman looked at them twice. I don't know. I like the like, I just like the term Omega Chad and it's funny as fuck to me. It's like it's weird because Chad used to be is like Giga Chad now is what Chad was then because now Chad is the ironic one and Giga Chad is the unironic one. Yeah. Every time I hear the name like Chad mode and stuff like that, I think about that stupid guy who refused to wear a mask at a pawn shop, and he rightfully got arrested afterwards because he was he was being a dipshit. He was being a douche. It's, like, it's almost like rule. It's like it's almost like rules exist for a reason, and you don't have to like them. Yeah. It's like, like I know. It's like I know I'm the guy that sometimes says rules were made to be tested. But I mean that in the creative capacity, like when you talk about how writing should be done or how yeah. art should be done. Like obviously in a legal setting, rules exist for a reason. But in a creative setting where you can't really hurt anybody, rules were made to be tested. And it's the people who test those rules and, you know, do something cool by breaking them that stand out more. Like, that's actually another philosophical shower thought I had, where, like, being an artist is about testing the rules, and it has one of two outcomes. Like, you either prove why the rule should be broken, or you prove why the rule exists, and you never want to be the guy that proves why the rule exists. Because if you prove why the rule exists, that either means you didn't take any risks, or you made something bad. Fucking, um... I have a friend that, uh... Whenever you explain rules to him, he tries to find every loophole possible known to man. He's preparing for the day he finds a genie. Or a no. monkey's ball. He's just like, I've trained my whole life for this moment. I know every loophole. <laughs> yeah, there is a pattern to this. I gotta be very, very patient. Go ahead. I remember I remember that one Mega Man boss who kept fully regening their health whenever you used your super move on them. But the and we found out the trick was you needed to stop attacking him when his green aura yes, was. Yes, I remember that. Oh good god. That was one of the most like hilariously embarrassing moments that I was just like, oh my god, I didn't even realize that. It's like to be fair, it doesn't really tell you. Is like the reason I brought it up is because I thought to myself, wait, I've noticed that he like when the green aura is up, he heals proportional to the damage you do, and then whenever you do the super mute move, he heals all his health. So that's when I suggested try attacking him when he's not. Is like try using that move when he's not doing that, and then you used it and won. And it was like, oh, I was right. <laughs> You see, you won by way of the scientific method. You you observed, you tested, and observed again, and then tested again, and then we won. Science. Oh my god. Come on. Got him. <laughs> he just popped them. <laughs> I just love that, like, he does all this shit and all it takes is just one tiny little... <laughs> it just completely annihilates him. I love doing that. It's always funny. It's funny because, like, in the Smash community, people call Mega Man's little pellet shooter lemons. I mean, yeah. I Life just gives you lemons, you can make lemonade. But it, it, it's just funny because like you can tell who's played Mega Man and who hasn't because they'll know the name of the move. Like, oh yeah, the little pellets. 
Oh, no, man, they're fish. lemons. Well, you know what I've seen that's kind of odd to me? What's that? I've seen people ship Mega Man with Samus. And while I understand the similarities, I don't understand the ship. I don't understand the ship either. It's like, I know that they're both based on sci-fi, but Samus is a human being and Mega Man is a robot. I mean, that... That can work, but like... You son of a bitch. I just don't know if it does this time. Like, there are some Super Smash Bros. ships I do understand, like Samus and Solid Snake, because... You know... Stealth and <laughs> all that. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna stop fighting it. I'm gonna go to bed. Alright. Oh, okay. Son of a bitch. Um, See y'all later. Nope! Ugh. Ouch. Okay. People are gonna <laughs> people are gonna headcanon this as the Mavericks taking each member of the chat out one by one. <laughs> that would be one hilarious like creepy pasta from our let's play. <laughs> it's all because we it, like this all is in Minecraft. Oh god. <laughs> Is like freaking Mega Man's final boss gets replaced Ouch. with Hero Brian, and Hero Brian's like, heard you was talking shit. <laughs> uh... Okay. And... You know what's the thing about me that I kind of wish wasn't a thing? Because I feel that? like I'd be able to enjoy things more. I wish I wasn't such a cynic when it came to creepypastas. How so? I, 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 there are some creepy pastas that I think are okay. Like, I know, Slender Man was alright for a little bit. And some of them sound interesting in concept, but when I really think about it, like, to me, every creepy pasta is the same. Like, it's like, ooh, haunted media thing come to life and kill people in needlessly horrible ways. Damn it! Because the idea of just dying isn't scary enough, Lemon, bitch. and it's always the same thing. It's like kid died, game did it, fucking bend round, whoa, and and again, it's like I know creepy bosses are supposed to be fun and creative, but it's like, eh. I I think SCP I think SCP counts as creepy pasta. It's like. SCP is a different issue for me than creepypastas, though, because with creepypastas, it is the thing of, like, they're all kind of just the same. But with SCP, it's a totally different issue. With SCP, for me, it's just fatigue, because every NPC oh, kind of does the same thing. Again, it's just, it's needlessly cruel death or fate worse than death that's inescapable, and yet somehow the Foundation just has it in a box. Like, fucking, the ah! difficult to destroy reptile, or the one SCP that fucking reduces you to paste if you look it in the eyes, and it's just like, how did anyone ever manage to make this work? If it's so unbelievably powerful, and so unbelievably cruel, that it can just. Because the difficult to destroy reptile can just escape whenever he wants. Damn it. Okay. And now. And I. I guess what I just said about SCP best describes why my cynicism exists, because all is like all of these like horror in media things yeah. are yeah. just the same thing. It's just overly horrific with what it does to people. Like it's always fates worse than death or being torn apart. It's never as simple as oh someone just got stabbed. No, it's just like, and the walls were painted with every shade of their insides in Minecraft. <laughs> and it's like... But, 
I can't believe I'm saying this, but like Five Nights at Freddy's was refreshing for a bit because it was just bad guy, like unalived some people, and then they possessed some robots, and now they're trying to kill you, and that was the whole thing. But then Five Nights at Freddy's became really over the top and out there, and the lore became so dense that it collapsed under its own weight like a whale. You know what I mean? I think so. Like, I haven't played any of the Five Nights at Night, uh, Five Nights at Freddy games, but I know that it had, like, such an open lore, and... It's like, if, it, it, if just, you it don't... was an unexpectedly big hit. Um, I think yeah. the problem was, is that because it became popular, they wanted to appease the mainstream, and when it comes to the mainstream, their perception of what is horror or whatnot is always attempt to be more over the top, instead of being subtle yeah that that's it FNAF lost its subtlety because like you can pinpoint the exact moment that things start well Damn. that the franchise started to veer away from the interesting part of its horror and into the more ridiculous one because like after the fourth game everything just kind of became damn it weird like from sister location onwards all of a sudden it wasn't just ghosts possessing the animatronics like there was this special ghost metal stuff and like the emotion of agony wills these things to life and makes them hurt other people and blah 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 and the killer is trying to become immortal using this stuff and is, like that was the whole plan all along and he wasn't just some crazy guy who killed these people and it's just like you, you could have just not done any of that and still told an interesting story. Like, man kills guy, guy possesses robot, robot tries to kill you, survive five nights, go, is fine. You you don't need it to be more than that. Also, Retro Gamer Kevin, I see what you fucking put there. Uh I think Logic is completely speechless about that. Ah! That's... is like... I saw someone earlier mention can go, is like Golden can't drown in this game, can he? And then I was like, I'm waiting for it. I know it's coming. And then did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, like... Yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's is a really good example of, like... <laughs> When a franchise's lore becomes too dense for its own good. Because, like... And I know it's weird to say, because there are other franchises who arguably have much denser lore. But I feel like certain genres are... Like, I feel like certain genres can fit more or less density in them from a lore perspective. I feel like there's a lot more room in, say, science fiction for dense lore than there is in horror, because, like, there's a lot of things you need to maintain in horror to keep it interesting. Like, you know, the scary aspect. Like, it's not enough to just give you jump scares. You have to keep people guessing. You have to... You have to implement the unknown because people fear the unknown more than they do most tangible things that can actually hurt them. And that's actually one of the things that made Skinema Rink such an effective film, is that there were no answers. It was just a bunch of weird shit happening. Like, it was done in a, a somewhat cohesive way. It's like, it, it's like a childhood nightmare from the dark sort of thing. And it's it definitely captures that atmosphere. You don't know what it is... And you're terrified of finding out. Yeah. In fact, like, I saw a really interesting case study about why the Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary upgrade was so bad. And they talk about in how in the mission where you're introduced to the Flood in the first place, the updated graphics and bright stuff and the fact that 343 decided to put their over-designed Forerunner aesthetic all over everything and put blue lights everywhere for no reason 
ruined the eeriness of the introduction to the flood because now the tension and the fact that you basically couldn't see anything until it was too late was gone because you could see everything because the devs were too afraid that you wouldn't be able to appreciate their beautifully made friggin set dressing and i'm like i'm not here for the set dressing i'm here for the eldritch abomination from the depths of space hell and it's like you know it's thematics but like mm -hmm. it's it but that's a, another example of how even if you're not focusing on fear of the unknown fear of the unknown is kind of irreversibly essential to good horror narrative mm -hmm. because again it's not enough to just rely on jump scares like jump scares aren't really what make FNAF scary back when it was scary like, it was, you know, you don't understand what you're up against. Like, again, nobody even knew Golden Freddy existed, and they became the talk of that game because no one understood it. And they really wanted to. But at the same time, they were anxious about it because it was unknown. It was just a weird golden bear that crashes your game, which you weren't expecting the first time. And now, things like Security Breach exist. Which isn't a horror game or polished <laughs> like <we didn't... laughs> it's just weird it's like it's like... The, it's like the mainstream doesn't understand horror yeah like FNAF's mistake was that it explained it like it told you like it gave you the answers like i mentioned earlier the whole like you know remnant ghost metal and agony and like william afton who was the killer like you know they named him and made him this freaking psychotic immortal remnant vampire scientist rather than just a crazy guy that killed people mm-hmm and stuffed their bodies into animatronic suits, which he didn't even do. Something else did that in response to what he did. But it, like, at that point, it just becomes, eh. It's like, I think, it's like, again, one of the videos I watched said it best. Once you explain what's making the creepy thing happen, it's not creepy anymore. It's like when you explain the joke, it's, you know, if you have to explain the joke, it's not funny. If you have to explain the horror, it's not scary. <laughs> explain the joke. <laughs> Sent an error in understanding the humor. Please put in the correct CDs. Put CDs. CDs nuts! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, if you have to explain the joke it's not funny, can work for any genre. Like like I said a moment ago, it's like, if you have to explain the horror, it's not scary. If you have to explain the action, it's not. You know? Yeah. I can, it can work anywhere, pretty much. You just have to find the right words for it. Like, if you have to explain the existential horrors of Lovecraft, you haven't made Lovecraftian horror. You've just made a mess with multiple eyes that elicits questions. Mm -hmm.